Hello everyone, my name is Spitfire and welcome to another reaction. Today we have When Players Steal Characters for D&D by Blaine Simple. Now this video popped up on my recommended feed and I'm like I'm going to have to watch that because I have players because I'm a DM that actually do this. They actually take players from anime, other gaming content, anything they can get their hands on. And I don't mind it being a DM. I always think it's kind of... Because you have like... I have two players that actually make original characters and two players that actually steal from content they watch. And I have no problem with them actually doing that. I think it's a little cheap and I want them to actually make their own characters. But uh, one kind of uses that as a kind of example and kind of makes references and kind of uses that to make his character. And then one just straight up steals the character. So I have no problem with it. If they want to do that, go ahead. But I will try to wean them off it and try to make their own characters at some point. And if they don't, I'm just going to take them out of the campaign. That's how it goes. Or stop playing with them. It's, you know, things like that. Uh, so, yeah. I don't know what to really say. Uh, I wonder if he's like one of these people that actually likes it or dislikes it. Because like I said, I'm not, I'm not any different about it. Uh, so, yeah, without further ado, let's jump into this. Here we go. D&D is a fantasy game where the word says. creative freedom has almost no boundaries. With around yes. a dozen unique classes to choose from, not including Ranger, any, any, backgrounds any, that any fill classes. a void in your character's you, lifetime from when you were just a wee rat up Ranger, until now, friend. and personality Shots traits fired. to make your hot boy sizzle like an overcooked steak golden corral, almost no Dungeons yeah. & Dragons character is ever made alike. But you've already not read really. the title of this video, so I'm not going to be just talking couple, about the unique but snowflake really characters of D&D, but rather the ones that were made with more questionably <laughs> original characters. Sonic, no. There's a lot of factors that go into creating a character for any gamer project. People can't just sit yes. down and instantly create a Picasso or the Mona Lisa. It takes time, well, a lot of renditions, and a lot of but paper. But, but we don't have time, time for that, so now it. what? Well, what do we have to work with? Our brains? What? The internet. No, are you crazy? That's not a tool for creation. Get your head the out of the internet. clouds. Oh, I know. The internet. What a stable oh, source for original content. <laughs> I'm not going to yes. lie when oh, no. I say that most of the characters that I create in D&D are influenced in some way or another by fan culture. Be it from that awesome video game Cut, character yeah, that I thought was cool sense. to the other video game character I thought was cool. Now that I think about it, a lot of my characters are inspired by video games. A lot are, but, whatever. but you, know, you may think that there's only goes. one or two ways to make an unoriginal character, but there's actually three types oh, of ways to do it. There, now, a, I'm not hating on any like specific ways to build a character, 20. and I'm just addressing some of the pitfalls of using unoriginal characters and how it could affect the table in most D&D games. It's not really a bad right, thing so. when the player comes to the table with an unoriginal character, so long as the other players in the DM are cool with your concept. Yeah. So consider this no video problem. as my exaggerated opinion rather than any sort of fact. We don't do facts on this channel. We're not Wikipedia. <laughs> Now, so I don't sound like no, I'm moving I, uh, towards I anyone in particular, let's start with the types of characters that I'm usually guilty of creating. Let's call this group the copycats. Now, copycats are the types right. to take personality traits from one character and use them in their own. A lot of my creations fall into All this right. list because if you think about it, movie and video game characters already have so much detail stitched into their designs. So it didn't make yeah. sense for my worthless empty brain to lead towards wanting to... Shh, shh. Rob from them. Steal. Now, using yeah. a fan character as a base for your own concept isn't a bad thing, and in the end, yeah, it could make your character a lot more appealing. You gotta make sure that what you take fits with the design of your character. To give you an idea on what a copycat looks like, when I first began playing D&D, I made a half-elf rogue named Loki Grandal. I got inspiration from the Norse god Loki, and I wanted to play a character yes, with a course. similar conniving personality. Someone charming and slick. Loki was my inspiration, so I adapted a bit of his charm onto my character and <laughs> boom! I had a cool character concept. So, the next type of character plagiarism is a little bit more involved than the first, in that it takes a little bit more convincing to get people believing that your character is actually original. Skinners are the types to get so attached to a fan character's physique that they fantasize carving out that character's body and wearing them as a skin suit. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. In normal people terms, these players just like the way that the fan character looks and wants to roleplay as someone who looks like them. I see this a lot yeah. in my campaigns, and there's a lot of creative ways that you could go about it. Firstly, something that Skinners are really attached to is the physical appearance of their senpai, which means that unlike copycats, they're usually more open to creating a unique personality for their character rather than just pirating one and calling it a day. However, when the group meets up for the first time and it's your turn to describe how your character looks, you instead give a perfect description of Mega Man. It's obvious that the people around the table are probably going yeah, to assume that your character that is. is Mega Man, yeah. regardless of the backstory and personality traits that you gave her. 
Yes, yep, you yep, didn't even yep, wait until yep, I yep. mentioned their gender, you impatient monster. This is my OC, Mega Woman. That <laughs> doesn't sound right. But I digress. It's the way you steal your senpai's <laughs> really, face that friend. matters. If you're guilty of being a skinner and you need some pro tips from a cool guy, then don't worry, bro, or female bro. I have you covered. It's always a good idea to stay open to the idea of your character changing. Stay loose and ready to imagine your character as an unusual class, new clothing, or even a different gender. If you're fine with that, then cool. Giving your character traits that set them cool apart dude. from the original design should help your case when you need to explain how this character is nothing like that other guy you're probably thinking of. I try after that to show the table that my character isn't just Link, but rather Birding Hammer, Barbarian Elf, and Savior of the Seven Isles. He's blonde, strongly built, and wields a legendary weapon named the Master Axe, which he uses to seal the evil within the realm. <laughs> nice. A quest, he's heard, is required to unlock the weapon's true power. So yeah, there are ways to make awesome yeah, character designs off of original characters, and, and sometimes it comes out even DM better than you imagine. Go off those or you can just steal everything from the original. Stuff. If you really like Senpai's yeah, abs that, that much, I'm not gonna judge. Skinners may be something, but are nearly as plagiaristic as character type number three. These PCs are the ones that merge the copycat's have... way of mimicking personalities with the Skinner's way of mimicking a Skinner appearance. I'm campaign. gonna call these guys the cloners. So. Cloners take their senpai's personality traits, ideals, bonds, flaws, and face, and stick it onto yeah, themselves. Yeah, I have a, I have a copy this point, cat the player in who skin designed this campaign. creative masterpiece is just a, RPing as this character. Uh, cloners are usually yes, the ones who attempt to recreate their senpai's in the game as Jim similarly Black. as possible to the original, giving them a fitting set of abilities that they can imagine that cloners, character so, uses. Frankly, unless your DM accepts plagiarism in his classroom, or no one else has ever heard of what game or movie your character comes from, these types of designs can just kill the immersion. Like, imagine a party of diverse, varying characters, and just right in the middle pops Mario, Master Plumber, and oh, Savior no. of the Princess Peach. <laughs> now, that could be hilarious, Yay, and yes, funny, it'd be yeah. awesome to see Mario storm a castle with his allies and fight a dragon turtle to save his best girl. But there's a few problems with that. Cloners usually get bored with their characters sooner than others, and it gets worse the closer the PC resembles their senpai. So yeah, it yeah. could be hilarious and awesome, but also embarrassing and possibly immersion breaking. I'd only really recommend that people play characters like this if the campaign is specifically set to cater to that design, so players beware. There's a lot of different ways to make a character in D&D, and some of them are a lot more creative than others. In the end, though, yes. it's your design, and you get to decide how your character looks, talks, and acts in the world. Regardless of how you got your inspiration, what you enjoyed at the time, or even how badly you want to RP as D.Va. I'm sure it'll be fun in the long run, so long Great. as you and the other yes. players can enjoy themselves at the table. Do whatever you want. Like I yes. said, D&D is a game of creative freedom, and no one is holding you back. But seriously, if you make D.Va and bring her to my campaign, we're going to have some problems. <laughs> Hey, nice. hey, hey, wait a second, we're not done here. I well, want you to look no, deep not. inside yourself and ask the following no. questions. Am I a cool dude or female dude? Did I enjoy this video? Would I like more of this content showing up in my YouTube's homepage? Well, you're I obviously cool, but I if you also agree with the other two, consider stuff, subscribing so. and ringing that bell. It helps me out a lot, and it keeps you entertained. Yeah, go so subscribe. He, he makes great good content. All right. All right, back to the normal end screen, and I'll see you cool kids later. See you, man. Yeah, I don't think there's anything at the end of this, so I'm just gonna end it here, because I think this is the end screen. So there's probably nothing at the end here, but if you like this jam though, but I'll see you guys at the outro. No, like, like I said, I don't have a problem with uh, people doing this, and I don't think he does either, but... Yeah, sometimes it can get a little bit annoying, but like I said, sometimes burnout of those characters can happen a lot sooner. And usually I try to have a quest, kind of, if they want to do that, kind of like he said, kind of go along with that character and can use that character's original backstory from their project they took there from and kind of mold it into my own direction uh and it's really fun to kind of do that and, and try to get that get those characters to kind of have them do quests and things that kind of make form them into their own like uh, amalgamation of their character and their own character it's a uh, very weird but uh yeah i really like this i, I can't like i said go subscribe I'll leave the original in the video description. Go check him out because he makes really cool content that I love to watch. I actually saw another video I'm probably going to do in the future, but I'll save that for a reaction. I won't tell you. No spoilers here. But, yeah, I really like this video, uh, and this was very really fun. And I can't wait to do more of this guy's content. Uh, if you really like this and we do of it, uh, please like. It lets me know that you guys actually like this content. Uh, and let's see more. And hit that subscribe and bell. I sound like a fucking retard, but YouTube likes it, so I gotta do it. 
Uh, so, yeah. See you guys in the next video. Peace out and bye. Better get ready for the assault. Balls to the wall and it's all your fault. You just had to ransack the royal vault, so it's payback. All y'all have been default. First, everybody roll for decks. Next, reflect on your last respects. None of you pass the check. All of you feel the effect of the hex. Flex, that's the answer. Or do you forget that I'm a necromancer? Shatter in the neck of the blade dancer. Making a wreck out of the dragon lancer. Last chance to pray to the god of your choosing. And if you're fortunate, maybe you can get some mercy.